Hey everyone, Mike Vulcan here with Freelancer Masterclass. Today's course is entitled My $30,000 a Month Freelance Sales and Lead Generation Strategy. I'm going to walk you through how I did this on a couple of occasions, uh, step by step. But before we do that, please go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're starting to put out content daily now. So if you're a freelancer, side hustler, part-time, full-time, go ahead and subscribe. We've always got good content for you. So let's go ahead and get started. I ran this funnel I'm about to describe to you on two separate occasions for one month each. And each time I brought in $30,000 of work. I spent an average of $6,283.91 in paid ads to get the $30,000 each time. So you're talking about over $12,000 worth of expenses to get $60,000 worth of work, which is a good return. Uh, the $30,000 came from four contracts each month, totaling $7,500. Now I'm in marketing and I can get contracts totaling $7,500 because um, in the nature of marketing, it's easy to get contracts um, if you are experienced and you have good uh, reputation out there and you have good reviews. Um, some other industries, it's very hard to get contracts totaling that size. But what if it, you're in that industry, I want you to think what could get you larger contracts, contracts that size. Okay. So for example, I had a graphic designer come to me uh, a couple months ago and he was getting very small projects. He, I mean, he was mainly a logo designer. And I told him, well, the very nature of your work, logo design doesn't lend itself um, to very you know high paying per project jobs, but he went ahead and re-targeted uh, his niche. Now he's targeting wineries and he's getting a lot more per per project than he is um, when he was didn't have a niche. He was just accepting everything. So now he's targeting high end wineries. They have lots of money. They'll pay a lot for branding, and um, he does a little bit more than just logos now. But so if you're a writer, a graphic designer, whatever your niche is, think about how you can make seventy five hundred dollars or more. Um, per per uh, contract, okay. And keep in mind, it doesn't have to be all at once. These these particular projects I'm I got from this funnel uh, were specific projects. Like uh, to be exact, these I was targeting uh, insurance companies, okay. And I was setting up a specific marketing funnel for them. I was describing this marketing funnel, and I was selling this marketing funnel as a one time fee of seventy five hundred dollars. So once I set it up, I just said, here you go. I explained to them the marketing funnel, and they they ran it from there. Um, but this $7,500 could be um, you, something that could be awarded to you over a four month period. It could be, you know, a, a couple thousand a month. So think about it like that. So here's what the funnel looks like. Now you think, might think, wow, Mike, this is complicated looking. I don't know if I could do this. Well, we're going to break this down in this class for you. Okay. Now, the reason why I'm doing this class is because I get so upset when I see these gurus, internet gurus, I put in quote out there with these courses they're selling for thousands of dollars. I won't say any names, but it seems like there's a new one popping up every day. And they, they sell these courses for thousands of dollars and they say they make tens of thousands of dollars a month. And it's just the most basic funnel. Uh, and this is basic. This is nothing complicated. There's no secret here that I invented. This is a basic marketing funnel. Now, the order in which this funnel is presented might be a, a bit unique, but it works and it's measurable. And um, I'm gonna show you each and every component of this. First of all, this is the first part. Uh, let me bring up my, my tool here. Uh, there we go. So we're gonna go, here's the funnel I just showed you right here, right? Um, and this is the part we're going after. Um, ideal, identify your ideal client and the client's pain point. So I want you to define your service and don't just say, well, I'm a graphic designer, I'm a freelance writer, I'm a marketer. What exactly do you provide from your client's point of view? All right. So in my case, this was a, a an initiative I was doing for insurance um, companies. So I was providing a marketing funnel to insurance companies, a paid ads marketing funnel to insurance companies. Okay. I want you to define that. If you're a, a writer and you're or, and you want to do branding work, you you provide branding and communication expertise to um, West Coast clients uh, in the winery industry, you know, sticking with the winery industry, whatever you have to be specific. Okay. And then that helps you define your customer persona. You can define um, who, what, when, where, and why you're, you're targeting. 
You just answer those five W questions or five W uh, words. You really have to get down. Don't skip over this because this is the foundation for everything you're going to be targeting. If you don't know who you're targeting, you're targeting nothing. Uh, it's Think of it like shooting an arrow. If you're just going to shoot an arrow and you don't have a target, how do you know if you hit anything? How do you know if you hit what you want? How do you know if you're effective at your shot? Uh, you know, I'm a uh, big tennis player. As If you follow me, you know that. Um, when, when I practice, I have a target because I don't know if what I'm doing, my technique, my – the way I'm, I'm thinking about hitting the shot, if if I'm close to my target, then I know I'm, I'm getting better if I get closer as, as I keep doing it. So if you have a target, this is your target, your customer persona, define your service from a client's point of view, okay? Now you can move forward. Now, I want you to determine what specific benefits your client is seeking to buy your service. There has to be a pain here. The foundation for all business, for all successful business, is to find your buyer first, okay? Okay, so now you're finding your buyer. You're defining your buyer. Every buyer, there's, listen, a little bit of inspiration here. There is millions of dollars out there right now for you, for clients looking exactly for your service. Who are they? I'm asking you to define them right now. Okay, so determine what specific benefit your client is seeking to buy your service. What pain points do you absolve from them? What can you solve for them? Okay. Now, determine your buying strategy. How does your client go about making a buying decision for your service? Um, are you targeting CEOs can make a buying decision on the spot? Impulse buy, like they see your ad, they see your landing page, and then boom, I'm going to buy it. Do they need to go back and collaborate with their team? Do they require follow-up? You know, I need you to define exactly how they make a decision for your service. And it's not how you want them to make a decision. Because if if you want them to make a decision, you could always just say, well, they'll see my ad and they'll, they'll call me and that's it. No, I mean, in reality, if it's a multi-thousand dollar contract, they're probably going to see your ad. They're going to require multiple follow-ups. They're going to require a couple phone calls, maybe even a marketing piece of collateral sent sent to their mail, like to find that, that customer journey, it's called in marketing, what that looks like to you. Like your ideal client that you're defining right now, how do they go about making that decision? Okay. Now we're talking about the second part of the ad. Let's choose a different color. Let's go yellow this time. So in this funnel up here that I showed in the second slide earlier, uh, when we just did this. Okay, now we're going to do this, Facebook and Google ads. Okay, I recommend you hire an expert to get you up and running, um, at least to get the campaign structure set up and all the settings correct. That's like 80% of the work right there. Maintaining it the, the month over month is 20%. But you want to do Facebook and Google ads, two of the best marketing platforms out there for freelancers, is um, Facebook ads and Google ads. Now, what's the difference between the two? First of all, if you don't want to hire an expert, and if you do, just contact, reach out to me. I've got tons of experts I can recommend. I even use some people that used to work at Google to <laughs> in the ads department to, to run my ads campaign. But um, you can too. It's not that expensive and it's really it's difficult to learn especially google ads it requires a lot of of knowledge uh, and it is a specialty facebook ads are a lot easier but they still require some work because you could really mess some things up but if you want to learn on your own google ads and facebook ads right here these links um some really good courses in there by the actual platform so it's by google and by facebook now what's the difference between google and facebook ads Okay, the biggest difference is when somebody searches on Google, they're showing search intent. Like, I need a marketing strategist, for example. I need a logo designer. Okay, that's actual search intent. Facebook ads, there is no search bar for intent there. You're, you're targeting them based on their profile or their interest or some other factor that Facebook has determined that that person is a winery owner. It is interested in the wine industry. I'm using that as an example. So... I generally like to use Facebook ads a different way than Google, and I'll explain that here when I talk about retargeting. Uh, but what you want to do is you want to get a Facebook and Google ads campaign set up and put most of your ads budget towards Google, about 80%, okay, 20% here. So if you have, let's just say, $1,000 to spend, and you don't have to spend the 6000 I spend. Spend $1,000 here um, in total. Okay, so 80% of that, $800 would go into Google Ads and $200 would go into Facebook Ads. All right. Now, the next part, let's um, go back a little bit. We're talking about lead page with lead magnet qualification form. We're at this part of the funnel right now, 
lead page. So we just talked about this, we talked about this, and now we're doing this, okay? Lead page with lead magnet qualification form. I'm not talking about a big expensive website. This is a lead, I'm sorry, this is a landing page. One page, no nav bar, there's no navigation bar at the top that can drive traffic away or get them distracted about a home page or an about us page, nothing like that. This particular landing page is about somebody selling private English lessons. And this is a good example of a landing page. You can copy this layout. Okay, this wasn't the exact layout I used, but it was very, very similar. Okay, this person selling private English lessons, so they have, um, it's kind of a weak title actually, you could, could improve on that, but it basically states exactly what you're solving. Like what, you're, this person was targeting people who need English lessons, so the very, top of the page tells you exactly what they do. And then they give you a little bit more of a description there and there. I guess that would be a value proposition. It'd be get professional instruction from an expert English tutor near you, K-12 through college, okay? Um, you always want a picture up here. It shows human interest, a picture of humans. I see a lot of landing pages with like crazy designs and it's like a motorcycle or something if they're doing something in the automobile industry or a glass of wine if it's a wine industry. Images with human interest get are, be, are more clickable, okay? I'm a neuromarketer, I'll tell you that's a fact, okay? You wanna show human interest, stay away from stock photos as a stock photo, but if you, if you have a unique photo that's a good, uh, unique to your company, then even better. But if you have to use a stock photo, see if you can alter it a little bit to make it unique to you, okay? And then here's a big thing, you want that lead qualification form. This is a, the qualification form, okay? Getting started is easy. now. This is not something I would recommend. The, the box is okay, collecting information is okay, but this is for people who are ready to sign up right now. I mean, this is like an impulse buy. I recommend a middle portion here. So a person is interested in your product, in your ad, they see it. And this, this website assumes that you're ready to buy right here. I suggest you put something here, uh, usually some kind of ebook, some kind of something to get them to the next step to show them that you're an expert at what you do, okay? And then there's a validation of some media right here. Um, I wouldn't fake this if you don't have this and don't do it, but I, I, I do this because I've been in this many years and I've gotten lots of media over the years. I've been over uh, on 80 different radio shows, TV, all, all that stuff. Um, you can get mentioned. I guarantee you this person didn't have any kind of feature at the Wall Street Journal, any kind of feature at Fox. These are just press releases they paid for and it got put on some obscure page that nobody saw, uh, which is fine. There's, that's how most media bars are. So if you want to go buy a press release, you can. There's a lot of uh, PRweb.com does it for a couple hundred dollars and, and you'll get on these feeds. They're just in, on these obscure pages that no one will, no one will read. Um, but, uh, it doesn't matter. So you've got some icons here, uh, that shows some validity. If you have that in your industry, that, that would be important to your customers and go ahead and put those. And now here's an important part. This is where you itemize everything. Now people read in bullet points. Okay. Uh, you chunk it out better. Cause if you took these away, this would be long paragraphs. People wouldn't read, but, um, so now you're telling them, Hey, why do you want this? Here's the solutions I, I offer. And, um, you know, you, you could take certified, you could take lessons from certified teachers. There's a satisfaction guarantee. What you're doing is you're minimizing their objections. So what you want to do in this case is write down three to five objections of people. That, when they come to your site, they'd say, Oh, well, this guy might not do this or might not have that. And, um, that's why you're going to take your top three to five questions or objections that any, uh, prospect would have. And you would solve those in these checkpoints here. Okay. And that's it. I mean, there should be <clears throat> very little to no scrolling. They shouldn't have to scroll up and down to see this information. A uh, nice little footer here that shows you where you're located. If you're targeting local clients, even better. Like if you're running ads to San Diego and they see San Diego, Hey, that's, that's great. People like lo local people. Uh, local people to work for them. So that is a, a good layout of a landing page. It's not perfect. There, I showed you the issues with this, but you have a lead magnet and a qualification form. There is no lead magnet here, but ideally you would put one here. Like I mentioned, the ebook or some kind of video or something like that, where you can further exude your, your, um, your expertise. Okay. All right. Now we're on to what color let's do blue purplish. Um, now we're on to the user submits a form and um, retargeting. So talk about this, talk about this, talk about this, okay? So once somebody fills out this form, remember this from the landing page? Um, they are gonna be uh, given, you're gonna be giving, they're gonna be giving you information. 
Okay. Now, just the fact that they visited your landing page, you put what's what's called a cookie on your um, landing page. And this is when you set up your Google ads, they're going to give you a tracking code and Facebook ads are going to give you a tracking code. You're going to drop that in. It's actually quite easy, but somebody who's, if you hire somebody to set up your ads, they can drop that into your code on your website. Um, so here's an example of where a retargeting ad would show up. You see it, it's on CNN.com. Any website that leaves space for ads like this will show your ad. And I'm sure you've been subjected to, to retargeting ads. Okay. If you looked at a pair of shoes on Amazon, you might see like you're on eBay or CNN or, or Forbes. You might see those same pair of shoes follow you around for the next 90 days. That's because your, your computer now has a cookie on it. So it got activated by the tracking code. So now you have retargeting ads. Okay. Technically, I don't want to confuse you. The tracking code doesn't trigger a, a cookie. Okay. You're going to sign up for a retargeting, um, uh, co ad company, uh, Tabulu is one, uh, ad roll is one, but a retargeting campaign allows you to cookie somebody's computer, which is perfectly normal. And that cookie lasts on the computer for 90 days. And it gives you, it gives them your ad that brings them back to your landing page because guess what? They click on your ad, they go to your landing page. Realistically, 95% of people, if not more are just going to leave and not fill out this form. You want them to fill out this form, 5% or less will, but the retargeting ad brings back that 95% because what you're doing here on this landing page is you're getting people to submit their information if the timing is right. Most of the time, the timing is not right. So that's what a retargeting campaign does is it brings back traffic when the timing is right over the next three months, okay? Now we're getting into the end of the funnel here. Now the user has submitted their information. We talked about this, 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 and this. Now we're going to be finishing up with this. So now the, the client submitted their info. At this point, they're technically a prospect, but we're going to call them a client here. Now we're going to give them a three-part drip email campaign. You could do this pretty easily and for free with MailChimp. There's any really mass mail program uh, can do this. A drip email is a sequence of emails. I like to do one a day over the next three days, even five days. However, that automatically sends them email. The first email they get right away that says, hey, thanks for subscribing. Here's your ebook or whatever your lead magnet is. The second one is, hey, hope you read our ebook. Here's another piece of value for you. Don't forget, I'm here for insert solution here. Yeah, I'm here for your logo design of your winery project or whatever. And then the final one is, you know, again, always ask for that call, but hey, can we hop on that call? Is Tuesday's a, a good day? Is 48 hours from now good? Whatever. That final email uh, should be, hey, this is my last email to you. Uh, hope you enjoyed the ebook and whatever other value you, dro you drove to them. Would you mind if I called you on this day or, or let's set up a meeting? So you're, it happens automatically. So if you're starting to get 20 or 30 leads a day, you don't have to keep doing this manually. Okay. And ma again, MailChimp has something like this. All right. So I hope you learned a lot about this, um, about how to drive traffic, very targeted traffic to a very targeted solution to a very targeted problem that your prospect has. This will bring in money if you set it up right. Okay. Good luck.